Hello, everyone. Welcome once more. My name is Paul Moorhead. This is Moorhead Media Studios. And today we're going to be looking at Photoshop Smart Filters. So we can see in Photoshop, if I'm over here in my Layers panel, uh, we have this layer that we've created. And this is the copy. This is the duplicate of all the layers combined into one copy that sits on top of everything. And what we're going to do is, in order to create a, a layer that is accessible for smart filters, we have a few options. So first we need to convert this layer by right-clicking. We can convert it to smart object. That's one way to go. And then the other option is to go up to where it says filter at the top of your screen, and you can click on convert for smart filters. And when we do that, it allows us to... Yes, it says the selected object will be converted into a smart object. So it's going to create a smart object anyway. So we're going to hit OK. We'll say sure thing. Let's do that. And we can see here it gave us a little icon in the bottom right corner. This may, means it's a smart object, which essentially a smart object is really quite cool in that it's very non-destructive, meaning you can apply a lot of different effects. You can apply different settings to this layer, and it won't destroy the original image. In fact, let's just show you here. If I go to Filter, and I'm going to go down to Stylize. I'm going to click Solarize. This is usually a, quite a drastic change. You can see here, Solarize created a layer, actually created a mask. It actually created a smart filter mask. You can see this white space here. And then beneath that, we have what's called Solarize. So what we can do is we can actually do a number of things in that since this is a mask, we can essentially affect this mask one of two ways. So a mask is essentially a color fill that's applying an entire effect to that area. So in this case, it's white and it's filling the entire screen, this entire uh, document with white. So a mask can be affected if we draw with, especially if we wanna, let's say just for example, we don't want this main character to be uh, masked out. So how do we do that? Well, we can easily see that if we draw on, see I have a click here, I clicked on the, uh, the mask, the white area. If I draw with black, what it's actually doing is it's painting out this area so that the filter is no longer applied to this area. And so one easy way to remember it is, um, the, the white space is essentially going to be affected. Everything that's white is affected, and everything that's black is unaffected. So that's an easy way to think of it. So as we can see, this is, uh, this is one really cool feature of Photoshop. We can create these smart filters, which are editable. And we can do something really interesting. We can not only just paint out. This is taking quite a while, my computer here. But let's just select out this area. And instead of... Um, you know, trying to figure out every little nuance piece here, I'm trying to keep it in the lines. I'm just going to kind of rough, roughly use our lasso tool to fill in, create a selection. And here in Smart Filters, make sure, making sure I have it selected, I'm just going to do Alt Delete and fill it with black. And you can see there, that's what it did. It, it created a black shape that filled in the space. So this is no longer going to affect this character. <clears throat> so that's a really good way to think of it. Um, and in terms of the filter, let's just say I didn't like that one. Well, I don't need to uh, delete it. I can actually leave it there and just hide it. And let's just go and let's create another filter. So I'm gonna do this one. Let's do um, oil paint. I went down to filter, stylize, oil paint. We can see it brings up this little menu here. <clears throat> and we can zoom out. You can see it's getting, it's actually applying this really beautiful texture to everything, which I really like. And then you can mess with it. So we can stylize it more, you know, we can clean it up or have it be really rough. We can scale it up so that the, the technically like the strokes, right? The texture is larger itself and the brush detail you can enhance or, or decrease. And you can also change the angle of this one. So it's pretty cool. There's a lot of little things you can do. Shine, so obviously the amount of reflectivity that it's, it's showing. 
you can really pump this up a lot and make it look very strange, but we're not going to do that. Uh, something like that, and let's hit OK. Well, we can see, once this loads, that it will affect the image, but does not affect the mask. So you can see if I zoom in here, look at how it affects the arms, it affects all these different areas of, of color, but it does not affect here. It does not affect the, the character's face. So that's because the filter, it retained that selection from before. And the cool thing about smart filters is once you've created them, you can actually just go in, you can click on this little slider, double click where it's next to this filter, and you can change the different settings of this slider. So that's a really handy way to create change without uh, destroying the original image. You can see it actually came up with a new filter. It's saying, but we're going to blend this. And I'm going to just cancel that. I just wanted to show you how that would look. So yeah, so again, if you want to edit this filter, let's just say you want it to come up, like just be a certain point on there, then you would select black and you can either select a brush and you could try painting it out. That's definitely one way to go. Or you can use your lasso tool or another selection tool to deselect that area that you don't want to be affected. So that's pretty much it for smart filters. The possibilities are endless with this particular effect. And I um, hope you learned something and we look forward to seeing you next episode.